Добрый день всем. Good afternoon, everybody. Ukraine Media Center at Ukraine Forum continues its work, and now I'm glad to introduce our guests. They are fighters from uh, Belarusian battalion named after Kostus Kalinovsky, Vadim Kabanchok and Jan Melnika. Vadim, Jan, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Mr. Kabanchok, could you please tell us about the activities of your battalion? You're welcome. Good afternoon. Our battalion uh, has been part of International Legion. We announced about the creation of our unit on the 25th of March 2022. I have been in Ukraine since 2014. Uh, during some periods of time, I was in uh, at the front lines in Donbass, an anti-terrorist operation defending territorial integrity of Ukraine. And now we are implementing assignments in, 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 within a completely Belarusian unit. Unfortunately, we all know about the support provided by Lukashenko regime for aggression against Ukraine to happen from the north, and uh, that uh, uh, assault uh, offensive towards Kyiv uh, resulted from uh, what was done by Lukashenko as the regime. More than 600 uh, rockets, aircraft, uh, infrastructure, fuel, intelligence data. It has all been contribution of the Belarusian regime to this war against Ukraine. And uh, when we created this battalion uh, from Belarusians, uh, 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 we, uh, I'm saying this uh, without any uh, excessive pathos. Uh, but we show with our, with what we do, that Belarusians are not the nation of aggress aggressor aggressors. Uh, it's just a minority of Belarusians who support this war, this aggression. The same can be extrapolated to Belarusian army. If you have some data uh, that confirm that they don't want to uh, engage in military action against Ukraine, will it will be described in more detail by my comrade in arms, Jan. Jan, you're welcome. You're, well, hello, I'm Jan. I have been in Ukraine since 2014. I arrived to Ukraine in January 2014 when we had the revolution here. Uh, uh, next day after the murder of Zhizhnevsky, you know that he was my compatriot, a Belarusian citizen who lived in Ukraine for a long time, and he uh, lost his life fighting for freedom of Ukraine. After that, many times, Belarusians lost their lives in the front lines. Uh, I fought with, gently with Belarusians. I fought for Ukraine's territory, its freedom, its civilization choice in this war. And starting from that so-called pseudo-referendum in the next Luhansk People's Republic on the 18th of May, I was engaged in combat action in Donetsk and Luhansk uh, Oblast, so-called separate districts of Donetsk and Luhansk Oblast. And I'm proud of the fact that now we, Belarusians in Ukraine, are able to have officially our national unit uh, being officially part of the armed forces of Ukraine fighting uh, 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 jointly uh, with uh, Ukrainians and uh, other people from more than 50 countries, especially during the recent uh, events, I was jointly with guys from UK, Brazil, Denmark, from all countries, from all continents, so this is an honor for me. Today, indeed, as my comrade in arms Vadim already said, we Belarusians who took uh, arms in their hands here. We stand for the honor of Belarusian nation. We are brothers with Ukrainians. And this uh, war is not waged by Belarusian people, like it's in Russia, where the majority supports their leader. In Belarus, according to the data from various media and various opinion polls, various agencies, in Belarus, 
according to various estimates, about 25% of people, just one-fourth only, supports uh, what Russia is doing in Ukraine today. Only 25%. So we can say that, uh, you know, uh, based on uh, our communication with people who stay in Belarus, uh, who are conscripts and those who are conscript soldiers, there are same same there are same mood in Belarusian army. We, generally, we have to understand that in Belarusian army, th those in infantry units and artillery units who can carry out assault against Ukraine, it's maybe 15 to 20,000 approximately. And you have to understand that only one fourth of the of those servicemen support what Russia is doing. Only one fourth is the disease called racism or Russian world. And it's all, it's more uh, terrible than all those Nazism uh, uh, of the 20th century. So, you know, to say that Russian military can participate to the full extent in that military action on the Russian side, we cannot say that for all those reasons. Also, we understand and we know, like you all know, the Belarusian society on a large scale was against Belarus' involvement, Belarusian involvement in this war. For example, my father personally was uh, detained and arrested for 15 days for coming and for going to protest against uh, use of Belarus in this and Belarusian territory in this war. For you to understand, you know, now after 2020, if you go to streets in Minsk, after 2020, when we had those killings of protesters, of oppositioners, uh, when we had those mass scale oppression, when uh, um, hundreds of people were injured and, uh, and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people left Belarus, you know, now to go to protest against war in Minsk is like the same as going to protest against war in Crimea or Donetsk. And still we see a lot of people, thousands of people who went to the streets and they understood that they would be brought, they would be detained and kept in the most terrible uh, conditions you cannot even imagine in custody when they are beaten almost to death. You know, I'd like to emphasize that the Belarusian nation, the Belarusian people, the people of Belarus do not support, most of them do not support what Lukashenko and Putin are doing. Lukashenko has usurped the power, occupied the country. Belarus is a victim to internal and external occupation. And uh, Lukashenko is a proxy of Kremlin. He is not independent in what he is doing. He completely uh, follows the orders of Kremlin. Belarusians are now fighting for Ukraine on the Ukrainian side. There is no one Belarusian union, unit on the Russian side, and there is a Belarusian unit, Belarusian unit on the Ukrainian side. You see, all those opinion polls show uh, what, how, how, what is our right here towards Ukraine. Vadim, Jan, I would like to thank you and your comrades, your fighters fighting in international legions. And I would like to thank you on behalf of all Ukrainians that you are defending Ukrainian freedom, Ukraine, you are defending democracy. Thank you. But I cannot but ask about guerrilla movement in Belarus. We watch it and we hear that there are cases where railways are blown up, which are used, as we know, uh, by the aggressor to transport its equipment and troops. Do you have any information about those operations? As my community in arms, Jan, said, after 2020, uh, we got uh, our civic spirits. Uh, there have been a lot of initiatives, citizens' initiatives, political initiatives. Some of them were anonymous, and they were uh, pushing their agenda on the Internet. And those initiatives joined a uh, guerrilla movement when the aggression against Ukraine started. First of all, I would like to mention cyber, uh, cyber guerrilla. 
cyber guerrilla, they run several strong attacks against the cyber infrastructure, against the regime. And actually, those warriors somehow disrupted the operations of Belarusian railways. Then other initiatives joined, like uh, by Paul. Uh, there are also those so-called wild guerrilla fighters, as we call them. We called also on behalf of the battalion, and our people, uh, Belarusians, uh, started guerrilla warfare. According to the information from the regime itself, they have facts about more than 80 uh, sabotage acts uh, in the Belarusian railways. Uh, they used significant uh, forces to protect the railways, like internal troops and other units, like all those gendarme units, Belarusian KGB, organized crime units, and others. Uh, the latest arrests have been very cruel. Uh, there have been three guys from Bobrusk detained, and they shoot at them in their legs. Uh, the government units did it in order to show uh, that they have no limits in what they are doing. And there have been those latest amendments to Lukashenko's laws, and uh, there, is up to, there, has, there is now up to capital punishment for, for sabotage, for those uh, guerrilla uh, action. So the regime has been much more about those activities of the citizens of the society. Unfortunately, we don't have any data about explosions and railways, but we have data, we have information uh, that those control, uh, that, that control equipment has been set to fire. There is very special equipment. They don't have it in Belarus, and because of sanctions, they don't have any sources to replace that railway equipment. In the same uh, way, uh, they uh, made short circuit on the railway so that electronics would show uh, that this part of the railway is uh, occupied by some train or some obstacle. That's done on the mass scale. Also, also, Belarusian society has been gathering and passing intelligence data about Russia's movement, Russian troops' movement in Belarus. We have several strong channels, uh, I think, in Ukraine you know about those, including Gayun channel on Telegram. And people anonymously send photos, send videos, send uh, those data. We and our battalion telegram channel also received a lot of information which we passed to the respective Ukrainian agencies handling those situations. So basically, Lukashenko's regime uh, has created so a certain boomerang effect when hundreds of thousands of Belarusians were uh, forced to leave the country after uh, uh, those uh, after uh, uh, those events of 2020-2021. So it's the basis for our uh, recruitment. Maybe uh, every tenth of those people who wrote to our battalion uh, bought uh, channel uh, joined us, but most of those people have been helping us in information resistance in guerrilla uh, fight, and we have strong base there in Belarus waiting for us, and we dream of those of that time when we will be able to liberate Belarus, and we know that Belarusians on the mass scale support us. They wait for us to start actions to liberate Belarus, the territory of Belarus. Thank you, dear colleagues. You're welcome to ask your questions for our guests. Please uh, introduce yourself and please speak into the microphone. Are there any questions? I'm Vladislav Obok from Ukraine Forum. My first question is a practical one about your. Uh, activities in support of Ukraine and in support of the future of Belarus. We know that, in I know that in addition to Kostus Kalinovsky battalion, your battalion, also in Ukraine, in March, uh, there was uh, that Pahonia unit created. Has there been any 
uh, consolidation of those units under joint command or how do those Belarusian units act in Ukraine? This is the first question. And my second question is maybe half rhetorical one. It's about changing rhetorics of that self-proclaimed Belarusian President Lukashenko. Now he has somehow, I think, hinted that what is going in Ukraine now is not any special operation, and he, as Putin says, but war. And he has said something against Putin. What does it mean? Is it about some changes in his mind? Or is it some uh, self-protection? Or we just cannot trust his words when he says that Belarus will never assault against Ukraine? I'll say a couple of words if I may, about changes in Lukashenko's rhetorics. Uh, if you monitored uh, the Lukashenko's regime's attitude toward, uh, you know, he has been in power for 27 or 26 years, 26 uh, years, and I think that over those 27 years, the key part of his activities was, you know, he tried to sit on two chairs at the same time, so to say. And when it was advantages to him, he would somehow, be, be between West and Russia, and you know, he, ha he can change his footwear while flying, as we say it, about consolidation of units, about Pagonia, we know their coordinators, we spoke with them, we had contacts with them. Currently, we cannot say that this unit has actively joined the defense of Ukraine, that Pahonia unit. Maybe we don't have full information, but uh, that's the information we have at the moment. But we welcome every initiative, also those which are unrelated to our battalion. The more Belarusians uh, joins the active defense of Ukraine, the more experience we get and the more the more people will learn about us uh, in Ukrainian society, they will know that Belarusians are not only about those collective farms, uh, uh, those uh, nice roads and so on. Belarusians are also people who want freedom for their uh, country and who want democracy for their country. And I'd like to add something about uh, Lukashenko sending their emissaries to Europe. Uh, for some separate and efficient, inofficial negotiations to have those sanctions uh, 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 lifted. He tried to do that trick several times, and there is a big danger, you know, if you try and come to terms to Lukashenko for some tactical advantages, tactical benefits like fuel or other goods, you know, uh, there is this then contraband hub to circumvent sanctions and Putin's regime will use it to extend this war. So uh, instead of uh, uh, killing those two uh, regimes, instead of uh, strangling them, you'll give them a chance. This is very dangerous. And you have people whom we personally know who are in prison in, under Lukashenko's regime, and they say, don't trade with this regime. It's like taking hostages, you know. He takes hostages and he'll release those uh, political prisoners uh, in exchange for lifting of sanctions. But uh, Plenty measures will not stop. They take more prisoners every day. There are court hearings every day. And there is some uh, vicious circle. You know, now we can break this circle. Because the first and foremost reason of this war, as we all know, is Putin's regime. If Putin's regime is stopped in Ukraine, then Lukashenko's regime will not survive one week longer than Putin's regime. We are confident about that. Any more questions? Thank you. Any more questions? Friends, you're welcome. From Italy, Giuseppe Fasano Good from Corriere. Good morning. Um, you said before, if I understood, that you are in touch with others, uh, foreign soldiers. And uh, um, uh, uh, are you in touch with some Italian soldier? Just because yeah, I'm Italian, I'm interested in this. And then you saw that, that uh, 
25% um, of uh, uh, Belarus people it's supporting what Russian do it here, only 25, but... Sorry, but uh, uh, only 7% uh, are ready to fight with okay. Russia. Okay, okay. From this 25 Okay, person. but uh, my question is, uh, uh, how many people support what in your, in your country, what you are doing here, you, your uh, foreign legion? Thank you. Ви можете українською. Дякуємо. There are Scandinavian Nordic countries, Norway and Sweden. Most countries are here. Now about those 25%, whether they support it, you know, 25% are people who speak that, say that, yes, I believe that was right to do it. But when they are asked whether you are ready to personally participate in that war on the Russian side, only 7% agreed. So there is huge support from Belarus. For you to understand, you know, probably I will say the truth by saying that half of those who wanted to join our battalion are people from Belarus. But even if it's not 50%, then definitely 40% of those people, you know, who wrote our telegram board wanted to join. There is huge support from Belarus. I see it even, you know, when I just speak with people, you know, it's war, and it's war which is not in the territory of Belarus, but when I speak with my relatives, some of them are in their offices, uh, like uh, some, some people have relatives, or some people always have relatives who watch it. You know, we have our internet resources on Facebook and Telegram, and they are now uh, named as terrorist resources. If you subscribe to those resources of ours, to our Facebook page, for example, to our Telegram channel, uh, uh, you may be brought to criminal liability just for that. And even in this situation, I, my, wife, my mother tells me that her friends who are older than 50 years old, they look for information on the internet and we know, we see, we see information about those visits, about our subscribers. We have had about 30,000 subscribers on Telegram, but we see uh, the total number of visits who visited our page about uh, 100,000 sometimes. So I'd like to add about Italians. When we were uh, in the voluntary unit in 2016 and 2017 in Marinka, in the city of Marinka, I met Italian warriors there. There were two or three of those guys. Unfortunately, I don't remember their call signs, but I remember that there were uh, people who would be joking all the time. Uh, even though they, don't, they didn't fully understand Ukrainian, they performed their duties in checkpoints. Uh, uh, they were cheerful guys. They were helping to check, to check cars and all that. They were merry guys. Uh, sometimes they would speak Italian, and uh, uh, the only thing I learned then was, excuse me, non pari italiana. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? No more questions? Oh, there is a question. From Austria, Seven Ocean Pictures. Um, I have a question about the supply. Where, where does your battalion get the supply? Is it from the Ukraine or is it from Belarus? Так як ми входимо в склад Збройних сил України, ми є частиною з офіційним номером, це і частина іноземний легіон. Зрозуміло, що все постачання, що тичиться дотично літальної зброї, боєприпасів і так далі, воно йде від Збройних сил України. 
но нам дуже багато привозять з волонтерської допомоги і фактично більша частина білоруської діаспори, вона зараз працює на забезпечення нашого підрозділу. За це велике дякую. Так. Кристаючи з допомогою, хотів би показати свою велику подяку діаспорі Бельгії, яка допомагає одна з найбільших діаспорі Британії. Білоруські діаспори в Британії, білоруські діаспори в Польщі, в першу чергу, бо, вс... бо взагалі, в принципі, вся логістика допомоги йде через Варшаву, через Польщу. От. Взагалі нас підтримують діаспори з Італії, привіт, з Німеччини, а взагалі, в принципі, з, з кожної країни Європи, Франції, да. От. Но, ось. Це, це найбільш потужні, я вам зараз такі підкреслив. Взагалі, в принципі, з Америки, да, теж не треба не забувати, амуніція добре поступає саме з Америки до нас. Дякую вам, дякую за вашу чудову українську. Друзі, дякую, що приєдналися до нас. Дякую. Друзі, я вам нагадаю, що о 14.30 до нас завітає Олександр Матузяник, речник Міністерства оборони України, який розповість про ситуацію на фронті. Дякую, залишайтеся з нами. Thank you.